A pleasant morning to everyone and welcome to this year's Basic Research Methods Training Program of the Metro Manila Health Research and Development Consortium or MMHRDC. This is Professor Dr. Michael Joseph Tino, or you can call me Doc MJ or MJ, and I am the Director for Research Development and Innovation Center of the Our Lady of Fatima University, one of the proactive members of the MMHRDC, and I am pleased to serve you today. In the next few minutes, we will be exploring the concepts, literature review, and research framework, technically known as the theoretical and empirical basis of research projects. And I will be focusing on the tricks, tools, and even traits of mastering this craft. First and foremost, I want to say hi to our emerging researchers. Take a deep breath and enjoy the training program. Gradually, we are learning research from part to part, step by step, and section by section. My only regret is not to be with you physically this morning, but rest assured that I am not a robot or artificial intelligence. I'm a real human being behind this lecture. Let me greet everyone a good day, and I am pleased to share with you this picture of the sunset here in Baltimore, Maryland, and I always start and end my day in this view from my room. Baltimore is the home for Johns Hopkins University, or JHU, where I am completing my second PhD. JHU is a comprehensive university, but they are all well known for medicine and allied health programs. For the love of continuing professional development and research, I stayed here during the time of the pandemic to finish my in-person, online, and hybrid courses. Interestingly, JHU is the first and top-ranked research university in the U.S. What I love about JHU is its commitment to research and how their studies are really impacting the community and the world. Because as professionals and educators, we must embrace research at its core, and we should always think of the potential impact of our research after completion. Will it result to better understanding new and improved ways of doing things, or an output that can be used by the masses. We should look at research as a solution to our current issues and problem. Understanding the research process, as comprehensively discussed previously, is an ongoing journey, and it is a professional commitment. Maybe later in your research journey, you may engage in more advanced research topics. However, one of the things that I have learned at JHU is you need to become an expert on their research basics. For instance, they always assign their best faculty members teaching the basics of research, and we always revisit the basic concepts and digging deeper into it because it's the key for you to master the craft of research, which is, I admit, not an overnight thing. Everyone must understand that in research, we must have the competencies or tools in doing our tasks. Consider this drawing as a metaphor. For example, architects and engineers, just like researchers, are using a set of tools to accomplish every task. Their tools consist of the things at the upper tray, or the most accessible, or these are the things that they use too often because these are the basics. They also have the tools from the lower tray, consisting of the things that they don't use that often. In research, there are two things that are considered to be the basics of research, or most probably, using the previous metaphor, are included in the upper tray of skills that every researcher must have. These are the skills of doing a literature review and choosing the right framework for your study. At JHU, we call it the process of subtraction. Subtraction is an essential component of research planning, or these are the one of the essential steps to engage in doing a research project. My discussion is all about these two essential basic concepts. And to provide clarity and brevity of discussion, I would like to present my session objectives. First, for the tricks, we will be discussing the importance of framework and literature review in research. So these are the theoretical component. Second, I'm going to integrate strategies and technologies as we explore concepts. 
And finally, for the trait, I aspire to develop your curiosity, excitement, confidence, and values as a researcher by sharing to you my own experiences and life lessons in research. Please take note that the task of doing literature review and choosing the right framework for your study is different in qualitative and quantitative research. For instance, in qualitative research, literature review and developing a framework may come after data analysis. This is because most of the time, qualitative researchers exercise bracketing or setting aside their biases. This is also the reason why literature review and framework is optional in the proposal manuscript of qualitative papers in the graduate school. However, in quantitative research, which is the most common for the hard sciences like medicine and allied health, we do subtraction in the conceptualization phase to dig deeper into the topic and a certain gaps in previous studies. Again, subtraction consists of literature review and identifying the right framework. One technique to understand this difference in reasoning between quanti and quality research is presented in this figure that I submitted to Johns Hopkins. Based on philosophical basis of research, qualitative research is theory building, therefore, review and theory comes after data analysis. While quantitative research is theory testing, therefore, literature review and theory supporting the study must be identified when developing your proposal because this is what you're going to test. We can dig deeper on this if you have questions later in the Q&A. One interesting inquiry is on the placement of literature review in the final output or the manuscript. In an IMRAD format paper, review of re related literature is found after the introduction. However, journals have variations wherein framework and review of literature is integrated in the introduction. The key is to check with your targeted journal, which means Review of related literature and framework are sometimes implicit or explicit. However, it's always safe practice to include framework and literature review in the research project format that you are working on right now. Now, to strengthen your confidence, I would like to share with you the results of several studies on the two essential talents of a good researcher. According to various sources, a good researcher has two essential talents, literature understanding geared with adept writing, or simply lugaw. Lugaw is essential. I think it's very easy to remember. Again, literature understanding geared with adept writing, which means researchers must be good writers and wide readers as well. So at this juncture, may I ask, how many of you like reading? Do you have favorite novels or books in your fields? How often do you read? And where do you read? If you want to embrace the researcher role seriously, you must be a wide reader. Because for me, I love reading since time in memoriam. I have my own collections of my favorite books within or outside the research field. Also, my go-to places are libraries from the famous and Instagrammable Peabody Library in Maryland near Johns Hopkins University to the collection of war books in Indianapolis, Indiana to the advanced and modern library in Alberta, Canada in Calgary. If every library offers a wide range of literature from different fields, we learn as we read. Our horizons expands when we read. In research, if you are a wide reader, this is a major advantage. Reading makes us better researchers because if you read a lot, you can compare, contrast, reflect, and generate new understanding. You can cite something in your current study, and as the saying goes, you cannot give what you don't have. And I hope you will enjoy reading a lot because our next topic gives greater importance to reading. Literature Review in Research Studies Levy and Ellie in 2006 defined literature review as a sequential steps to collect, know, comprehend, apply, analyze, synthesize, and evaluate quality literature in order to provide a firm foundation to a topic and research method. 
But for me, it is simply the reading and understanding part. Though the literature review section is located in section 2.0 or chapter 2 in most research formats, literature review comes as an initial step in your study conceptualization. Let us take a look at the process on how you conceptualize your study. If I will ask you the initial step in doing a research study, what would be your response? Anyone? I actually asked that previously to my previous students and mentees, and their useful response is research title, which is partially incorrect. If you see research as a product, you start with a title. However, if you see research as a process, which is better, you start by identifying your topic of interest, followed by reviewing the literature. But for me, always start a research project with a prayer. Amen? Amen to this. Then, I'll proceed to topic selection. Before you do literature review, it is important that you clarify your topic of interest. Selecting the variables of the study comes after literature review. And finally, identifying the framework for your study. Let us explore the different steps. First, selecting your topic. There are several ways in selecting your topic. However, from a personal perspective, it should be timely, trending, and trailblazing. Timely in a sense that it corresponds to a current trend, trending in a way that it will fill the gaps of previous work, and trailblazing where it can be a start of scholarly discussion and conversation and will impact the future of practice. Your topic should not be too general or too broad and not too specific unless it is an action research. For example, instead of selecting nursing education as your research topic, which is too broad, or the use of Zoom application in education, which is too specific, you can select blended learning as a topic. Again, not too broad and not too specific. Selecting a topic is part of a wider purpose of clarifying your preliminary research details. In this practice, there are two ways on how you can explore your topic feasibility and other potential focus and details of your study. These are the typical and the four wives and one husband approaches, or WWWH. First, typical refers to topic, person, intervention, comparison, and outcome. As an exemplar, these are some examples on how to explore your topic in reference to other details of your study. Another approach is the four wives and one husband or WWWWH. Please take note that for every completed study, we can identify the what, who, when, where, and how of every research and you can use that approach in conceptualizing your research in reference to your topic. After you have finally decided on your topic and the context where the topic lies using the TPCO and the four wives and one husband approaches, it is now time to do the literature review. Remember, your initial TPCO details might change based on your reflection on the studies that you will be reviewing. Literature review is sometimes called the process of reconnaissance in research. And reconnaissance is revisiting previous work and analyzing it for potential gaps that the current study would like to fulfill. It is also important that we clarify literature review practice in research. Because literature reviews may be done as a quick activity, a component of a study, part of a dissertation or thesis, or a standalone publication, just like a literature analysis. And just to clarify, we are discussing literature review as a component of your study and not as a separate standalone publication. However, I hope that you will also become interested in the literature review as a separate standalone publication in the near future because this is one of the most reliable sources of evidence and an opportunity to do publication as well. Just like the study that we published during the time of the pandemic related to nursing and human-computer interaction in healthcare robots. This may also serve as a good training idea in the future trainings of the MMHRDC. 
Moving forward, literature review as part of the study has several benefits, and I call it the three S, QS, and Peace. Literature review gives us the idea on the context and content of previous publications, so as to compare them. It can also inform the researcher on the useful process and methodology, the outputs, and previous focus of studies under a topic roof. In advance, through literature review, we can also ascertain the quantity and quality of publications, as well as the usual questions being explored in previous work. But where do we get our literatures? In the era of fake news and fallacies, it is important to be aware of the quality sources, may it be physical or digital. There are types of literature according to sources. Literature may come from books or conceptual, journal or research, and other sources known as the gray literature, such as magazines, circulations, etc. It is recommended to prioritize research literature over other sources for the purpose of recency. There are also types of literature based on quality. There are literatures that are peer-reviewed and non-peer-reviewed, also mentioned earlier as the gray literature. Peer-reviewed papers are further divided into theoretical and research literature. Theoretical are articles such as editorials and commentaries, while research literature are original studies following the scientific process in identifying the problem, the process of collecting data, analyzing it, and presenting them in the manuscript. Therefore, research articles can be qualitative, quantitative, or mixed. You are very lucky to be an, in an era where almost every literature is digital and can be accessed by clicks. However, I do acknowledge that some sources require subscription, third word country problem it is, but there are sources that are open or free as well. As a researcher in the healthcare field, my favorite is PubMed. You can also utilize your university or affiliation subscription. I also know that there are other illegal ways of accessing subscription-based articles, but we should not be practicing that. If you have articles that you want to download but requires but uh, there's a subscription, please email me and I can download it for you through my JHU access. Here at JHU, we have access to almost everything, including ebooks. But I am confident that access to this database will be provided through MMHRD C as well. Oops, I might be wrong, but hopefully we can access them all throughout the duration of the training. Peace. Some of the most common databases are the following. In searching for potential articles related to your topic, you can use the basic Google type searching or the advanced searching using the keyword technique and Boolean operators. The future is bright for database access since open access publishing is increasing through the years, which means more free access to scientific studies in the years to come. Let me provide you a demo of literature search using PubMed. Suppose we will be doing a study about health education during COVID-19. If you prefer using the basic search, you will just type in health education during COVID-19 and click search. However, if you will be doing the advanced search, you can click explore found at the lower right portion of the screen. Clicking that will open a different page where you can type in your first keyword, COVID-19. Clicking on search will provide you with several options on the COVID-19 concept closest to your study. Once you selected the most fitted concept among the choices by putting a check mark beside it, click Add to Search Builder. Now, let us do another search using the keyword Health Education, which will also give us several options. Pick the correct and most appropriate option and click Add to Search Builder. Make sure the Boolean selection is at End. Then, finally click on Search PubMed 
using the button below the search builder. This advanced search will give you a more precise number of articles based on your keywords and you have the option to delimit based on the years the articles were published. And you can also download the articles and the list directly if available. For a more precise search using the Boolean operators OR, AND, and NOT in the advanced search box in most research databases will provide you with a more precise article search. You can study this in the future and get back to this lecture for an example. A common question among novice researchers is, how many articles do we need to download? Based on practice, the following initial articles are manageable for every category of studies. The rule is, the more you read, the more you know, and the more you are adept with your topic area, which will have benefits later when you defend your paper. You don't need to do it abruptly. You can practice gradually, or what I call the Sharon Cuneta effect. Hanggang ang himig mo'y maging himig ko na din. Gradually exposing yourself to reading and literature review until it becomes part of you as a researcher. It is also important to do evaluation of the articles you have downloaded in terms of relevance and rigor, especially if you have extra time and you want to ensure scholarly work. You can ask yourself, are the literatures that you downloaded relevant or appropriate for you in answering your research questions? And you can also empirically assess the quality of the articles by using several tools. For gray literature, you can use the AA CODs tool by Justin Da. You can scan the QR code or go back to this lecture later to access. AA CODs refers to authority, accuracy, coverage, objectivity, date, and significance. And you can score the articles from 0 to 6. For empirical articles, meaning quanti, quali, and mixed method studies, you can use the MMAT tool by Mac Hill. Scoring is from 0 to 100 depending on the component. You can use the QR code to download the MMAT tool. After you downloaded and evaluated the quality of the articles, it is now time to read. And there is an art to reading as well. A common inquiry is, Am I going to read each article from page to page? The answer is no. There is an art of reading articles as well. At this juncture, allow me to share with you a wonderful article published by a doctor. You can download the article by scanning the QR code. I will be providing the secretariat e-copies of the articles that I have shown in my discussion. Don't worry. These are the best practices and recommendations in reading. However, you can explore your own style and preferences as well in reading and reviewing the literature. Let me share to you my two own approaches. First is the tabular or synthesis tally. When doing a literature review for a study, I always summarize the important information about the articles when I read. Later on, after I accomplish this table, this resource will give me a bird's eye view of the studies that I have read. I also highlight some interesting research outcomes and take note of citable passages in the literature which are useful when I start to write the literature review section. Another approach is the keyword review. In this method, I copy and tabulate the keywords I found in every article that I read. Tallying the number of times the keywords appear in the previous papers, I have an idea what possible variables are considered blank spots and blind spots of literature? Blank spots are variables with no or less research. Blind spots are variables with conflicting ideas based on my literature readings. This will give me an idea on what to explore and argue on my current paper in preparation for writing the literature review section. This will definitely help me on the specific variables that I might focus on my study. It is also nice to use technological tools in managing your literatures, which can be sources of citations when you start to write your manuscript. Allow me to share the free software that I am using through the years, the Zotero application. The Zotero application is a free and open source reference management software 
to manage bibliographic data and related research materials. You can download the installer available for free for Mac or Windows depending on your device. Or simply, you can search Zotero at Google and look for the download software link. After downloading, it is important to be aware of the software interface. The idea is that every quality article that you download this must be encoded in Zotero. There is what we call manual encoding option using the plus button as you can see on the screen. And notice that when you click on plus, a vacant field will, will appear. And this will let you input the details of the articles at the right side. Entry for entry. Quite tiring, right? But there's good news. You can actually automate this process by using the identification numbers or codes of articles. As a general rule, most literature bear certain unique identifier or ID. For instance, we have ISBN for books. We have DOI or Direct Object Identifier for research articles and PMID or PubMed ID for articles found in PubMed. To automate encoding, you just need to click the magic one button and input the ID for assistance in this particular slide. Example, the DOI. You must be connected to the internet in doing this. And you will be amazed to see how the details automatically appear once you input the article ID. I will do a live quick demo for everyone to show you how quick it is and what are the potential benefits later. Moving further, you can also explore Zotero and how it can be integrated in Microsoft Word so that it can generate automatic citations and bibliography when you are doing the write-up. So for instance, I have here two articles that I have downloaded that I'm really confident that I will be using it in the future when I write my, my article. So what I'm going to do is to open the Zotero application. Okay. And to create a folder, okay, the idea is to create one folder in every research project. For instance, my research is about joy at work, okay? So I'm going to input the first article by looking at the DOI number. So where can I see the DOI number? So it's usually on the first page. So here's the DOI number. Every DOI number starts with 10 point. So I'm going to copy that. Go back to Zotero. Click on the magic one. Click paste or paste the DOI number and click enter. Okay. So as you can see here, all the information are actually uh, visible already on the right side. Let me try that to another article. So this is an article that we published uh, recently this year and I'm going to look for the DOI number which is on the first page and again DOI number starts with 10 point so let me maximize that so that I can yeah okay oops so let me input this again DOI number starts with 10 point Okay, then click on search or enter and here you can see that the information are already included on the right side so later on once you are writing your your research paper okay so let me open a microsoft word here for for instance okay and i'm going to write the introduction for example Joy is correlated with vocational identity. And once your Zotero is embedded on your Microsoft Word, you can actually um, cite it directly. And later on, after you completed the write-up, you can generate the references section automatically. And you can do that by clicking on all the citations or entries then select create bibliography from item then 
to select the uh, appropriate citation style required by your journal. For example, American Psychological Association, 7th edition. Make sure that the buttons are Bibliography and Copy to Clipboard and click OK. You go back to Microsoft Word and click Paste and do the necessary editing. Cool right. Finally, it is now time to write the literature review section of the manuscript. And there are several ways. Please take note that a good literature review determines the critical knowledge gaps and not just what we already know, what we still need to know, and how we can get there. A literature review must be direct to the point and succinct. You can divide the literature review based on several areas or based on the number of variables or concepts that your study would like to explore. It is sufficient to have one to three paragraphs per section or area. In my practice, I always remember the SEA or C approach in writing the literature review components. S, for synoptic or summary, you need to write one to two sentence summary of what you have read in a particular area. E, for evidence, you need to cite the related outcomes of previous studies. And A, for argument, you need to end the section by indicating your argument or gap that the current study would like to fill. This is an excellent example of a literature review write-up. The author started with two sentences summarizing his review of the concept or variable effort expectancy based on his readings. Then, in the second paragraph, he cites the studies that he read as evidences and examples. And lastly, third paragraph, he ended, he, he ended with an argument or gap. When you hear framework, what is the closest thing that comes to your mind? You might mention blueprints. Yes, it is correct. Similar to the architectural plans for an infrastructure project, such as buildings and facilities, and frameworks in research functions the same way, but in a different purpose. What are research frameworks? I know a lot of you have already heard theoretical framework and conceptual framework, and most of us are quite unsure on how it benefits researchers. Simply, a research framework will provide a tentative answer to your study inquiry or question. You might want to ask, what would be the potential answers to my question based on what has been already established previously? The answer may be a theory, a principle, or a concept. You also need to acknowledge that as researchers, we are not only confined to the theories, principles, and concepts within our field. We can also borrow from other disciplines as well. Let me give you an, an, an example. Nowadays, the use of digital cheat, cheating is rampant when we converted into purely online learning. And even prior to that, the rise of chat GPT also raises questions on the authenticity of outputs of our students. Supposedly, if I want to work on a quality quantitative paper about cheating with the central question, why do students cheat? I want to know your opinion on what are the potential answers to my research questions. The theory of multiple intelligences by Gagner can provide a tentative answer to my question. According to this theory, students possess different kinds of intelligences. Therefore, students who are non-cognitively smart may look for ways on how to make up for what is lacking. Another is the principle of the survival of the fittest. This principle will inform me that a potential answer to why students cheat is the objective to survive. And finally, the concept of GIGO or garbage in and garbage out may also provide a tentative answer to my questions. Students might be cheating because instructors might not, be, might not provide them with uh, quality instructions. As you can see, a researcher can borrow from other fields beyond the field of education. I would like to confess that when I'm starting as a researcher, I hate theories. Why? Because for me, it seems theories are complex, too deep, and so serious. However, when I understood its purpose, I developed passion and interest in knowing theories. Why? Because they are useful, helpful, and important. Theory by definition is a set of interrelated concepts, knowledge, and beliefs 
for the purpose of explaining and predicting a phenomenon. Let's take a look at it the other way around. I know most of you, especially those who are teaching, are aware of the social learning theory by Albert Bandura. On the right side is the graphical depiction of this theory. This theory is useful because it can potentially explain that learning is affected by many factors. It might provide answers to research questions such as, what are the factors affecting student learning? It can also predict who among your students may potentially perform better based on their advantages in personal, environmental, and behavioral factors. Another example is the TPAC model. This is very useful in studies inquiring about the traits of an effective teacher in the era of technological innovation. This theory states that an effective teacher is one with the knowledge of the content, pedagogy, and technology, and the combination of all of these three. Theories may be grand or encompassing or specific at the practice level. What are the theories that you are aware of and how it can answer potential research questions within and outside the field? In some instances, researchers may, may not capture the whole theory in a research paper. They can just extract a concept in the theory as applicable to their current work. In this area, we call it the conceptual framework. Conceptual framework can also be obtained by plotting your ideas and the potential variables that have a potential impact on your topic or main variable of interest. For instance, if you are studying vaccine hesitancy, you can ask yourself, what are the potential cause and effect of vaccine hesitancy? Plotting the variables may lead you to a conceptual framework. Once you selected the closest theory, concept, or principle that may provide tentative answer to your study central question, it is now time to write the framework section. Please be reminded the theoretical or conceptual framework is usually part of section 2 or in a manuscript in the literature review. Writing the theoretical or conceptual framework is easy. You must remember S, E, C, or SEC. S, state the theory. E, explain the theory. And your explanations must be cited. And C, contextualize the theory on how it can be applicable to your current study and how it can be useful to provide a tentative answer to your research questions. Again, your write-up should include three sections. The shortest is S, state the theory in one to two sentences. E, explain the theory, explanations may be cited, and C, contextualize the theory. I would like to end by sharing to you the traits of a good researcher. We have discussed a lot of basic and important concepts in your upper tray as researchers. It is normal to be overwhelmed and feel uneasy at the beginning, but practice makes perfect. No guts, no glory, no pain, no gain. Now, let me share to you the effective mindsets for researchers. I have completed a mixed method study 10 years ago about developing a positive mindset in research and came up with a model called the Pendulum of Momentum Enablers. I have found out that the most successful researchers have positive mindsets and sense-making strategies of multiple personas. They have the attributes of a child, an adult, and a wise person. Successful researchers have the mindset of a child full of excitement in his or her own research work, and open to all possibilities. Successful researchers also have the mindset of an adult, as defined by certainty of purpose and appreciation. Successful researchers have the mindset of a wise person, with a sense of altruism, and are willing to take a risk. My dear researchers, don't forget that researchers are also human beings we have our limitations, but we are doing our best to be better each day. And now, for our workshop activities, on your own, try to pick a topic and search for five research articles from research databases such as PubMed. Try to encode the article details in Zotero using the DOI and generate the references. Additionally, you can also search the literature and the framework most appropriate to your study that will Answer your research questions tentatively and attempt to write the section using the SEC approach. May I also take this opportunity to ask your support on my bid to become the 2023 Aster Gardens Global Nursing Awardee in London this coming May 12, 2023. I am lucky to be one of the 10 finalists out of more than 52,000 entries from 32 countries. 
My story of mentoring, research, and community service in nursing were appreciated by the jury. To vote, please scan the QR code or visit the Astor Guardians website, register using your email, and click the voting link that will be sent to you. Thank you for your patience, attentiveness, and together, we will rise to become resilient and passionate researchers. Thank you very much.